So let me get this right. These five teams have all been in the Premier League for over four years, earned hundreds of millions in revenue, and is the only one who didn't lose money? I mean, come on, what's going on? Welcome to the grand finale of Premier League promotion, Does It Pay? We've dissected the financial tales of five Premier League powerhouses. Brighton, Burnley, Crystal Palace, Wolverhampton Wanderers and Leicester City. For each, we've looked at the impact of promotion to the Premier League through the lens of their financials, revenue, profitability and cash flows. If you missed our previous episodes, stop right now and catch up here. We'll wait for you. In this last part, we'll distill our discoveries and spill the beans on the four crucial things any aspiring billionaire must know before buying their way into the Premier League. Some might just catch you off guard. So, with Premier League financials again making the headlines, let's buckle up and get into it. So let's dissect revenue. No shocker here, a stint in the Premier League generates a lot more revenue than in the Championship. Thanks Captain Obvious. What is interesting? The swings in Premier League revenue. Championship revenues are steady, irrespective of league position. In the top flight, revenues are much wilder. It's not just about the game. On-field performance, European adventures and TV distribution deals can all throw hefty curveballs to the top line. Remember Burnley's £40 million boost when the deal got renegotiated in 2017? Lesson 1 for the new owner. Premier League revenues are higher, but much wilder. There you go. Switching gears to profit, and it's a different story altogether. Things are a lot messier. Firstly, chasing promotion and making a profit in the championship is virtually impossible. When it comes to the Premier League, one thing is true. Champions League equals good. Just ask Leicester. For the others, it's a roller coaster of profits and losses, with Burnley being the consistent outlier above the breadline. But let's look at this another way. Let's align the timeline of each team's journey through the Premier League. In the year of promotion, it's losses all around, with some greater than others. But that first year in the Prem? Profits across the board, averaging a sweet 22 million. After this, they diverge. Oh, there's Leicester in the Champions League. But by their fourth year in the Prem, break even or loss making becomes the norm again. So what's happening? Let's compare the operating profit margin in year one versus year four. In that first year, profit margins look healthy. But fast forward to year four and they've all dropped dramatically. Only Leicester staying positive. So lesson number two, profit is not guaranteed, especially after year one. I've become discombobulated. I mean, it's confused. <laughs> I just read it in a dictionary. So why is that? We know across the Premier League that the wage bill makes up well over half of revenue. So let's see how that evolves. For our five clubs in that promotion year, staff costs were just over £170 million. Cut to a year later in the Prem, and this has nearly doubled to 334 By year four, we're at 560 million pounds. Staff costs have grown a staggering 34%. As a percentage, all five clubs kept wages below 60% of revenue in that first year of top flight. But the need to invest to maintain or improve the squad means that by year four, this is inflated to over 70% in all cases. Increases in staff costs are not guaranteed to be matched by revenue growth. So lesson three, the wage bill will devour your margin if you let it. So what's the magic number for a Premier League wage bill? In our Finance Premier League series, we saw how much each team paid in wages per point earned. The result was an average of 3.4 million. And if our minimum target is to stay in the Premier League, i.e. finish 17th, how many points do we need? Well, on average, that number's been 36. So 36 points multiplied by 3.4 million wages per point gives us a wage bill of 122 million. Yikes, that is sizable. Let's not take the piss here. However, should you emulate best-in-class Brentford, you would need just 1.5 million a point. Plug that in, and your wage bill's just 54 million. That's 70 million pounds saved. But let's move on now to transfer fees. In that first year of Premier League football, net spend on transfers was relatively modest, with the five clubs combined spending just 116 million pounds. But fast forward to year four, and that cumulative spend has spiralled to over 600 million. We know Brighton has since sold players for hefty sums, but this shows it takes years of increasing a player's value on the pitch before you can start generating returns. So let's combine this with cash from operations to see how much money these teams have made. In those first four years, it's a mixed bag. 
Burnley are the cash kings with over £100 million generated, but on the flip side, Brighton and Wolves have made heavy outflows. But what if we keep the tape rolling? Oof, all clubs are losing cash except Burnley. I mean, come on, what's going on? With all this cash going out, how much extra money have owners had to find and plug into the clubs? This is the first time we've looked at cash from financing, so how much has been pumped in? Wow. Apart from the Clarets, every team has put in at least £150 million. It's definitely a game for billionaires these days. Bernie's result is astonishing. They've even managed to take money out of the club to help finance the takeover. You beauty! The only thing that's tarnishing this is their relegation in 2022. So lesson four. Make sure you've got at least £100 million for funding. But ultimately, this brings us to the most important thing. Being clear about your goals. After all, football clubs are not just businesses. Come on, you know what's at stake? This is the game of football in English Premier League. So how is success defined? If it's success on the pitch, Leicester miraculously won the Premier League in 2016. If it's longevity, maybe it's Crystal Palace who have completed 10 consecutive years in the Premier League. If it's financial management, we've already seen that's Burnley. If it's a long-term project to build from League One to Europe, maybe it's Wolves or Brighton. Both were in the third tier of English football not too long ago, but both have tasted Europa League football. So there you have it, the financial saga of five teams living the Premier League dream. Navigating these financial storms is no easy feat, but I'm sure that won't stop every other championship team reaching for the stars. See you next time.